Hey, this is Rob. Uh, I promised at one point that I would make a video describing how I built my cob oven, so here it is. Uh, this is what it looks like now, um, except for some smoke stains on the front from using it. But uh, I'll show you all the stages that it's gone through. The initial idea was to make this oven in my backyard and be able to invite people over to bake bread, people who know more about baking than I do kind of steal their knowledge, um, have neighbors and friends hang out, and that kind of thing. The other idea was to kind of use just uh, materials that I could find, kind of as an experiment in just um, using discards and waste from, from our culture and just figure out a way to make it useful. So with that in mind, there was this uh, restaurant being torn down in my neighborhood, and that's where a lot of this rubble that you see came from. And that became the foundation for the oven. So that was the start of just finding stuff. Uh, there's a four foot diameter hole here. It's only a few inches deep. We don't really have frost in Florida. If it was uh, in the Northeast, you know, we'd have to have uh, enough of this um, river rock here to create a, a barrier between the the frost line uh, and the and the foundation of the oven, so that the cold wouldn't uh, creep up through it. So on the left, there's a four-foot diameter piece of plywood that I just found in front of somebody's house, uh, cut into a circle so that I could just use it as a template here and there. Uh, I started out just taking those pieces. You know, there was literally, literally a ton of that stuff. And uh, so this is very, a very small amount of what I had. And uh, the idea was, you know, I could break it apart and make it fit what I needed or dig through the pile and find a piece that would work. So I started out trying to just make it these uh, kind of solid layers um, and build it up that way. That wasn't a good idea. I think this one that you're looking at, I took apart and started again. Or this might be just the bottom layer. But eventually I realized that I'd have to make it more like a well. So hollow in the middle and um, and then fill it later with, with rocks and more of this rubble and, and uh, gravel and stuff. So here it is starting to look more like a, a hollow well. At the same time, I was also collecting um, bottles, wine bottles. Turned out the easiest way to do that was to go behind the uh, drink wine and paint pictures place. And um, they had a lot of the same bottles, so that was good. I was looking for wine bottles that were about the same diameter. And uh, those would become insulation later. You'll see that in a minute. So here's the uh, foundation kind of fully built. Um, and then on the top, I have some river rock under that wood piece to kind of make it level. So I just plop that piece of wood on top and um, put a level on there, and it looked like it was about flat. And um, the next step was to take that uh, that flat surface and, and start building a couple of rings of brick. And this will hold that uh, wine bottle insulation. The idea is that... Uh, with a, an oven like this, you put fire into um, you put fire inside the oven, heat everything up, and uh, there's a, a such a mass of clay that gets hot and stores heat. You pull the fire out, and then you can bake for a very long time. And part of the reason why you can bake for so long is because um, there's insulation to keep the heat in that mass of clay, and so there's a there's a hearth floor for the uh, oven and that's where um, the heat is the fire is actually sitting on that hearth it gets transmitted to a big thermal mass of clay that's underneath there and you'll see that in a moment and then um, the idea is to keep the heat in that thermal mass so here is where uh, we put some insulation to try and keep that heat from leaving the thermal mass and making its way down into the foundation where we can't use it for cooking so um, Here's the flat surface and uh, two layers of bricks. Those were bricks that uh, I think came from my friend Kevin's house when he was tearing down uh, his chimney. So this is more found stuff. At the same time, uh, I had to start figuring out what the building material would be. So the, the way the whole oven essentially is built and the insulation is using a mixture of clay and sand. That's cop. So uh, at times you add something else like uh, straw maybe, but for the most part it's just sand, water, and clay. So 
I started by thinking that I would just dig clay out of the ground. There's lots of clay around here, but um, as I started to do that, I realized that some things that I thought were clay were maybe more silt than clay. In the end, I thought I'm investing so much time and energy into this. I wanted to make sure that I had something that was actually a, a good building material. And it turns out uh, it just costs like 25 bucks for a, a ton, literally a, like a, a cubic yard of um, this material that's used to make foundations for buildings. And so it's already a mixture of clay and sand. And um, so in instead of actually trying to figure out the proper mixture of sand and clay, I just used it straight the way it was. And it turned out that made a pretty good brick. So here I just made a, a test mold, kind of packed some in there, let it dry, and then squeezed it really hard with my fingers. Um, Almost all of this knowledge that I have in making this comes from Kiko Denzer's book on making cob ovens. And so this is a test that he recommends. And um, it actually took a lot to break these bricks. So uh, these didn't just crack. This is, um, you know, right before I threw them away, I, I kind of beat them up a lot. I will say, though, that the entire project, I was using this mixture of clay and sand that I don't think was quite right. And you'll see I had a couple problems. I think it really needed a lot more sand. But at the time, this seemed really promising. So I took that mixture, uh, that building mix, the mud that I'd be using through the whole process, mixed it with a lot more water to turn it into this kind of uh, yogurt-like consistency, and then mixed it with this bin of um, chain, basically like a, it's not necessarily sawdust, but it, it came from a sawmill nearby. And uh, so it's kind of like the stuff that's left over from sawing wood. I wouldn't call it sawdust. It's uh, it's pretty gritty and there's some um, some chunky stuff in there. So uh, the idea is to take that uh, empty recess, two layer, two bricks high, and put a layer on the bottom of uh, this new insulation mixture. And this is where the uh, wine bottles rest. So. The wine bottles are insulation, not necessarily because of the glass, but because they're holding a volume of air. So air is a pretty good insulator. So you've got basically this big air cushion underneath the, um, the thermal mass that comes next, and this is to uh, keep all that heat from uh, leaving. The next step, if you ignore this um, contraption that's on top of there, you can see I've filled that layer of bottles with a bit more insulation, put insulation between the bottles and then a little bit on top, um, just barely covering them. So you can see a little bit of the bottles poking out. And uh, if you look at the edges, you can see I'm almost up to that height, the height of that two layers of bricks. So now the next thing is to build this thermal mass. So this is the actual mud, the building material that I'll use for the rest of the project um, in a big thick um, mass. And so when the fire gets built and burns and heats up the, uh, the fire bricks that make up the oven hearth, it also heats up this big chunk of clay. And this is where uh, after we pull the fire out, all that heat is just stored there and, and helps us bake for hours and hours afterward. So this could be just rectangular. Uh, there's no reason why it couldn't be. I just have access to a machine that allows me to cut big uh, plywood circles pretty easily. There's a CNC router that I have access to. So I just cut this, made this mold really uh, quickly. And um, the reason is that this will, this circle is actually the size of the, um, the, the area that I'll be baking in. So once the oven's done, you'll see that there's a circular um, footprint to it, right? Like where, where I put bread and pizza and whatever, there it's circular. So this, uh, is kind of mirroring the shape of the of the actual usable part of the oven. Uh, the other reason why I did this, you'll see in a moment, but um, essentially, uh, you know, we fill this with that clay and pack it in there. Again, this is that clay sand mixture, the mud that we use to build everything else. And uh, once it's all packed in there, I kind of flatten the top off again. So we're always kind of keeping this level so that um, if you ever wanted to bake something, you know, that had some liquid, like maybe you're roasting uh, something in a pan, essentially, it, you know, the idea is to not have the water spilling out or liquid spilling out. So uh, always trying to keep this uh, level. So uh, once this dried, I started to take the mold off and you can see I'm left with a um, 
trough around there. You can even see a little bit of the bottles poking out. You can see that it's not uh, totally, just to give you an idea where we are now, like look at the level of that moat, and, um, and it's almost up to that second layer of bricks. So the next thing to do was add an, a third layer of bricks. And um, now we've really got a moat that's going to contain more bottles and uh, more insulation mixture. If I were to make this uh, thermal mass in the middle out of uh, uh, in a square shape, and especially if the bottom of my the foundation of my oven was square shaped, it would make sense to just lay bottles in there in the same way that I laid them in before. But since I have this uh, circular moat here that's about the size of a uh, the diameter of a bottle, my plan always was to fill this with upright bottles and. Um, so the way that I planned to do that was to uh, cut the bottoms off of wine bottles and place them in there. So here you can see what that looks like. So to, to cut up the wine bottles, I basically just kind of came up with this really simple jig and scored them with a, um, with a glass cutter. And I mean, there are tons of methods for cutting the bottles off, bottoms off of bottles on the internet because people like to make glasses out of them and things but uh, I tried them all and <laughs> this this method seemed to be the way to go so I just scored them and then brought them over to the kitchen sink where I dripped boiling water on that line and then dripped cold water back and forth a couple times and it just would pop apart so it was pretty good then you can see they basically just go face down in here again this is to capture air this is the insulation it's also supporting because I'm gonna build this giant clay dome it also has some kind of structural merit to it these are actually pretty thick walled bottles but uh, and and the bottles underneath are all kind of in a way supporting a lot of weight up above so that's the second reason why there's bottles are here here it is all kind of filled in and everything is level at the top so the next thing was to you know I was planning to build an, an archway for the front of it and um, so the next thing was just to try it out and so I made this kind of wooden form and then built a um, an arch on top of it. And there's uh, pretty good instructions in Kiko Denzer's book. You basically just have these kind of chopsticks. These, I have these pieces of wood there that are laying on the, uh, on the clay. And basically you have this kind of arch uh, form supported on those little chopstick type things. And then, um, then you slip the chopsticks out and you can remove the, uh, the form. And the arch should stay up. So I took it apart, and you can see the mold. It has like uh, that form. It has uh, a front and a back to it. I'll use that again in a moment. But the idea is next to actually lay down the fire bricks that will become the oven floor, the hearth. So um, I put some sand down, and the reason for that is so that if I just put uh, bricks down on top of that clay insulation and clay um, thermal mass, there it may just kind of sit on there and have contact at a few points so what we really want is to be able to transfer the heat from those bricks into that thermal mass underneath so this is kind of like uh, some kind of you know it's almost like filling those gaps so that the heat will transfer downward so here's you can see if you ignore the arch you can see the uh, the oven floor that's the hearth those are the fire bricks one of the only things that I knew I would have to buy which uh, they're not that expensive, but you know, conceptually, I wanted to stick with all found stuff, but I knew I'd have to buy these. These are very particular. So um, here's the arch. This is kind of a rebuild. There is a keystone in the middle there. Um, you know, I, I didn't have to mortar it necessarily, but I was a little worried that when the heat got to it, that it might expand or contract and I'd have some trouble. So at this point, because I had the chopsticks in there underneath and I pulled them out, you can see that there's a gap. It is standing up on its own right now. It's not resting on the wooden form. Unfortunately, I couldn't pull the wooden form out because uh, that keystone had this little thing hanging down. <laughs> if you look in the center, it just wouldn't allow me to pull, pull the, uh, the form out. So I just took it apart instead. And um, that was mainly just to, to take the front and the back off and make sure that it actually stood up on its own. And it did. So the next step was to just put it back together and uh, you see the chopsticks under there again. So the next thing to do is to start building the dome. And the way that that works is you make a big sand mound, uh, cover that with clay, and then pull the sand out once the clay is dry. And you end up with a hollow uh, dome. So um, here it is with wet sand kind of piled up and the shape is intentionally kind of like a uh, an off 
off center egg and um, the idea is that this shape might be ideal for kind of allowing convection currents to circulate in there so it's sort of like a, a there's a point that's a little bit further toward the back so the sin mound represents the actual interior of the oven so you can see it goes right to the edges of the uh, fire bricks and um, the clay will be built around this pull the sand out and that becomes the uh, the space that we have to cook is this is this volume that the sand is defining right now so um, we're ready to start building the clay wall that goes around this thing uh, there's Tim on the left who helped me put the clay uh, on the actual sand mound and uh, on the right is Omri he and his partner Rotem both uh, were there with their son Ali and they they were doing some stomping of um, the mud mixture so mixing the sand water and clay that we were going to use to build this uh, kind of coiled up um, dome so before the clay goes on there there's a layer of wet newspaper uh, it's pretty hot here so that wet newspaper became dry newspaper pretty quickly but it wasn't too bad you know the idea of, is if it could stay as kind of a thin newspaper skin that would separate the sand from the clay uh, when when it's time to remove the sand from the inside we don't want to have all bits of sand sticking to the clay because then you know maybe months from now when you're cooking you find that you've got a grain of sand that fell off of the oven and land in your food or something so um, so the idea is to have a separation between the clay and the sand the uh, there's Ashton uh, Tim's son so these um, this wall goes around in layers and it's basically you know a fist width thick which is about three inches or so and um, and always pushing downward so uh, it's getting packed in really tight and you can see here as you start getting toward the top the um, that wall is always going to be you always want that wall to be perpendicular to the to the that sand mound so you can see as you get closer to the top it it is more at an angle and then eventually it just all meets at the top and you have a uh, complete dome so um, here it is from the side this dried for quite a while and uh, I had uh, a tent over it sprayed it with water sometimes I was trying to get it to dry really slowly and part of the reason for that was because it started cracking pretty badly and this I think is where the uh, I, I just didn't have enough sand you could build this entire mound with no sand just clay but then you have really bad cracking and that's how I knew that's sort of what the problem was because I had pretty bad cracking so I think there was just too much clay and not enough sand so this is inside the dome here you can see these kind of seams that are made with my fingerprints and that's where I just kind of kept trying to plug these um, these cracks that were happening you know I think at some point the oven's gonna crack anyway which is okay but this early on I wanted to kind of have it be really pretty structurally sound so I just kept kind of kept filling those uh, cracks kind of squeezing them together and um, at some point I got worried enough that I thought maybe I need to put a bit more clay on the outside now the reason for not putting a really thick amount of clay is because at some point um, you know this is a this is another thermal mass you're trying to heat this with the fire inside and have it uh, radiate heat throughout the cooking process but um, if you make this really thick then what happens is you're only ever able in the two or three hours that you're heating the oven you're only able to heat so much of that thickness you're not able to th heat the entire thickness and that remaining part of the wall that didn't really get hot is actually just drawing heat away from the inside of the oven so the thicker this gets uh, the worse it can be for the oven so um, mine is a little bit thicker than I wanted it to be which basically, basically just means that it ha I'd have to fire it a little longer each time which is okay so I made that kind of scratched surface and um, just in the hopes that the uh, that the next layer would adhere a little bit better than if I just kind of put it on there so here's another layer here it is with another layer put on and in this case I'm, I'm not really sure I, I think I threw in some uh, chopped up pine straw that I had hanging around just in the hopes that it might um, might help give it a little more stability and not crack as much so the next thing to do was um, you know I could fire the oven at this point and just see how it works without any insulation on the outside of the oven the heat would leave pretty quickly so I wouldn't really be able to bake bread probably but I could cook a pizza I just thought you know I don't want to put a fire in there because it's probably going to start cracking even more and um, I knew that I would need an insulation layer 
on the outside of this. So maybe I thought now is the time to do that before I fire it. And that will also help it maybe um, keep from cracking too much more. So I took that same uh, sawmill stuff and uh, mixed it with um, the clay, which you'll see in a moment. But before I did that, I put these sticks in the tops of the uh, in the top of the dome, so that I knew that that's the height, the thickness that I would want to uh, to get to with the insulation. So you see where the dome reaches right now. It's not nearly out to it's not even out to the ring of bricks. So I knew that um, building this, that the insulation layer, I'd want to be pretty thick so I could bake for a really long time. And so that's why there's so much space there right now to accommodate uh, the insulation layers as they accumulate. So here it is, the, the clay slip and, uh, and that mixture of uh, chainsaw stuff. And um, here it is on the oven. So now you can see it's actually out to the, the brick. And um, I think, you know, my plan was probably to stop here. Um, so we've got just the brick showing. And um, and this, this is a usable oven at this point. So uh, here it is from the front. So I fired it. And um, here I, ma I made a firing door by just rolling a piece of steel and attaching a handle to it. And this worked out great because it's basically letting air in through the bottom and then it's coming out through the top as a chimney. So I don't know if you can really tell from this picture because it, you know, it's a weird angle, but this is kind of like a half pipe sort of thing or a quarter of a pipe. Um, so one of the problems was that um, as the fire got large sometimes, it would lick out through this opening and then it would burn that kind of uh, clay and wood chip insulation material. So here you can actually see that it's burned it away enough that it, you can see the clay layers. And uh, part of the problem, too, of making a brick arch was that the clay never really wanted to stick to it. So you can see here that the clay is kind of separating from the brick. So it got to the point where you could kind of see heat and smoke and sometimes a little bit of fire trying to come out from on top of the brick, which was not great. So um, here's a close-up of that just kind of crumbling a little bit. So uh, I was able to bake and and uh or at least cook pizza we were definitely cooking pizza there's pizza in there but uh, i think this these initial times i just wasn't firing it long enough because um because that extra thick layer of clay in the beginning it requires a little bit more heat so i usually fire it for three hours now and that that works great so my plan at this point was to um, add more insulation and uh because you can never have too much insulation and then um also to kind of remedy this problem of the the burning uh, insulation that's on there right now. So there are two things going on there. If I wanted to add more insulation, I don't really know how I'd be able to do that because my plan was never to get a bigger insulation layer than this. So when, you know, it's okay to get the, to have the dome get bigger, but what happens once it gets to the front? It's either going to have to be uh, taper down to no insulation where the brick is, or it would have to somehow suspend itself in the air around the around that brick arch. So um, what I thought was by adding another arch, this metal one, uh, I could put the insulation layers that, that get uh, stuck on top of this, I could add them here uh, and have them rest on that metal arch. So the other thing is I'd add a chimney and, um, and that's mainly because I wouldn't be able to use my firing door anymore. And the other thing is, um, I also thought in, this would kind of remedy the problem of the fire coming up and licking against the insulation and it would uh, allow me to use a different kind of insulation that wasn't wood chips. So with all that said, I, I just kind of tried it out, burned a little bit of a fire. You can see the smoke coming out of the top of the chimney and a fire. It, I just want to make sure I wasn't uh, making it so that the fire didn't get enough air or something, but it worked fine. And you can see in the background there, I started collecting firewood. This was right after a hurricane. We had tons of trees down, hickory and oak and all this other stuff. So I started collecting firewood and I made a little shack to, to put it in. Uh, I couldn't use my fancy firing door that I was so proud of anymore because it wouldn't sit on the, uh, on the bricks anymore properly. So I, I just did this, uh, you know, kind of took a pan and uh, held it with a broom and that worked just as well. But I don't even do that anymore. It, it usually goes pretty well without any special accommodation. I don't ever need to help the fire along. It just burns right away.
So here it is with more insulation, and uh, you can see it's now resting on top of that metal arch. It's not fully covering the arch. It's also fully not out to the edges of the bricks. So I still have room to add even more insulation if I wanted to. And in fact, that's the next thing I did. But uh, this insulation is different. This is a mixture of uh, clay slip and this stuff called perlite, which is this really lightweight volcanic rock. And uh, the reason why it's gray now instead of brown is because I ended up using some clay that was, uh, I teach in the art department at a university, and there was a bunch of uh, porcelain clay that was left over from students. And so uh, I just took some of that and made slip instead of making slip from the, the brown mud that I had been using. And uh, mixed that with the perlite and then made this other layer of insulation. And you can see it's working. That fire inside is a little bit too big. And uh, it, it, I think, you know, what I've learned now is that the fires don't need to be this big. And, um, but y as you can imagine, that metal is heating up and it's, you can see that the insulation is kind of drawing away from it a little bit. There's a little bit of cracking happening, but we are still able to cook fine. So we're making pizza and, uh, roasting vegetables and baking bread. Um, so here's some of the first attempts before I really kind of understood anything about bread. I know a little bit more now, and I think the results are a little more predictable now. Uh, this is proofing bread in the uh, stoneware bannetons that my wife made, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and um, you can see here that even though it was working fine, we had some cracks in the insulation and some smoke and uh, steam kind of coming out, which is okay. That's not a problem. But uh, it was a little bit of a problem around where the chimney was that some of that perlite just started breaking off and coming off like little bits of popcorn. So... Uh, I made one last layer of perlite. Now you can see it goes all the way out to the edge of the brick and it goes right to the edge of the metal uh, archway, kind of covers the front of the chimney a little bit. It's not 100% ideal because there is uh, some extra heat right here in front of the, uh, in front of the, the chimney. So that starts to kind of get a little bit uh, crackly like it, like it did before but it works. And so uh, here you can also see, uh, it's a little weird because there's a stick next to it, but on the right, leaning against the oven, you can see this rake that I made, uh, just welded a piece of metal onto the end of a pipe. And so it's the rake that I use to pull the, the coals out after the fire is done in there, after I'm done uh, heating the oven. And uh, it goes into this metal can, and then that's where we're at when we're able to sweep and, and mop out the floor in there and then start baking. So. Uh, the neat thing that I was kind of excited about with this rake is that um, th since it's a pipe, I kind of made a little hole in the, the blade part at the end, so it doubles as kind of a blow pipe. If the fire was dying down, I could put this in there and blow through it and uh, add some extra air. So the very last thing I did was to add one more layer, which is uh, lime putty. And this is to give it a little bit of weather resistance. I always knew I'd have to build a roof over this thing if I wanted it to last in Florida weather. Uh, and this tent doesn't quite work out. This is really just for building it, but it can't. I can't use the tent if it's hot and um, because it would just kind of melt, I guess. And, um, and since the oven stays hot for over a day after, I've, after I'm done firing it, uh, there's really a period in there where uh, I can't put the tent over it. And here, where it rains without notice sometimes, I really have to plan ahead and make sure that there's no possibility of rain. All of that's just not realistic. So I knew that I'd have to have a little bit of weather resistance on the on the dome, uh, especially now that I just had that kind of clay popcorn on there. I definitely needed some protection. And then uh, also I'd need, need a roof eventually. So I made this lime putty. Uh, this is actually... Uh, much later after we've been using the oven a bit because the lime putty actually took about six months uh, or, you know, I let it slake for about six months, which um, is the longer you can let it slake in, in water, the better. So uh, then uh, once it's all mixed up with sand and put on the uh, the oven, it needs to cure. It doesn't dry, it cures. So here I'm, I have a plastic uh, sheet over it and I'm spraying it with water every day trying to keep it moist because you don't want it to dry out You want it to actually cure instead. So here it is pretty much cured uh, I see a little bit of spots in there. I think maybe it wasn't mixed as well as it could be with the sand, but it works great 
So now you're seeing a couple things. I'm starting to build a roof over it, and uh, it's become really white, and that's because I painted it with lime wash, and this is maybe the first coat, but eventually they would get three coats of lime wash so that it um, has this white surface that's a bit more water resistant. And uh, here's the here's the end. This is the what it looks like now, pretty much. And uh, there's a rain barrel in the back to catch all the water that um, that comes off the roof. Uh, you can see that there's some firewood inside the oven, and that's because after uh, after we get the heat that we want from the fire, we pull it out, put it in that metal bucket off to the side of the oven, uh, and then. Uh, kind of get rid of any extra coals. At that point, we have a lot of heat. It's, um, you know, it, while it's while it's firing, it's you know thirteen hundred degrees at the at the surface of the dome inside, and the floor is maybe eight hundred degrees. So that's great for baking pizzas. That happens, you know, in a minute you can bake a pizza. Um, flatbreads, other things that happen r that cook really quickly, and then uh, once it cools down, uh, which we also mop the floor of the oven and that cools it down a bit too and gets rid of any ash that's left and then um and then we bake bread and so should be able to bake break bake several loaves of bread and then uh once it gets down to a lower temperature maybe doing things like baking cakes and cookies things like that roasting vegetables um so kind of going with the way that the oven starts to lose heat but it takes quite a while for it to actually lose uh all of its heat so um you know, uh, drying seeds and fruit and things like that could happen way later. Um, but at some point, it, the temperature goes down enough that um, we just want to steal that last bit of heat and I fill it with uh, firewood and that dries out the firewood for the next time. So uh, kind of using all of the, the heat that the oven has. Uh, that's about it. And, um, you know, I'd say you could ask questions, but before you ask me anything, definitely get that Kiko Denzer book if you plan on doing this. Also look at Instructables because just yesterday I saw that someone posted, uh, someone who had made an oven this big had posted uh, an Instructable that showed how to make a very tiny version of it with just like four fire bricks as the, uh, as the hearth floor, which seems pretty cool. So that might be a thing to check out if you're interested in building an oven like this for yourself. Thanks.